the college campuses are completely out of control. So you have microaggressions and trigger warnings, safe spaces. The University of California just released more racist microaggressions. On them is a racist statement is saying there is only one race, the human race. That is an outlawed statement in the UC system. Saying America is the greatest country in the history of the world is not allowed in the UC system. The professors and the academics and the administrators, they will stop at nothing to indoctrinate college students away from fundamental American values. So many times I want to take it out on these kids. I hold them in such low esteem, these millennials. And then I realize, wait a minute, they didn't educate themselves. They're not the ones who came up with the, hey, nobody comes in first and we're not going to keep score. No one, they didn't do that. That's not their choice. Somebody else did that to them as a result of elites. It's a result of people who live in castles, who don't connect to the people in the real world. Our actual future, it's going to be dependent on what young people think because pretty soon young people get to be older and then they start voting and that's the way it goes. They're using every avenue they can to promote the idea that we're the problem. These supposedly stupid people are influencing others year in and year out through education system. They're in the places that we're not. You know, when I was a kid, we learned about civics. We learned about the three branches of government. It feels like to me, they're not learning it. There's more to political and ideological bias than individual teachers and teachers unions who are talking about President Trump. What country did we declare independence from to celebrate the 4th of July? Ah. It goes much deeper than all of that. What's the purpose of 4th of July weekend? I know, celebrate our independence. A little more specifically, please. I, I really don't know. The curriculum itself is often intentionally biased and one-sided. Who won the Civil War? I don't know. If you look, for example, at California's history and social studies curriculum framework, it conspicuously fails to mention, for example, the monumental atrocities committed by communism in the 20th century. Which political party was fighting to support slavery during the Civil War? Republicans. Actually, it was the Democrats. How? Yeah. Abe Lincoln didn't... Abe Lincoln Abe. was a Republican. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's... Mm. In the section on the Cold War, the curriculum framework only says that the Soviet Union had a poor record of protecting human rights. We want to know how many stars are on this flag. Hmm. 51. Oh, you guys gonna make me look stupid. How many states are there? In 2010, Randy Weingarten, the shrill mouthpiece for the teachers' unions, got her head handed to her in a debate broadcast nationwide about whether the union should be blamed for the failures of public education. The resounding yes side. Terry Moe, a Democrat poli-sci professor at Stanford. Rod Page, Secretary of Education under George W. Bush. And Larry Sand, a 30-year veteran public school teacher, handed her team a stunning defeat. The audience at NYU, in the largest, most liberal, unionized school district in the country, was almost unanimous in their verdict. Before the debate, 24% of you were for the motion, 43% were against, and 33% were undecided. After the debate, 25% are for, 68% against, and 7% undecided. The side against the motion wins. 25 to 1, against the unions. That's what happens when we have a level playing field.